Okay, cool. So now we know how to take off our drone. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how we can send our drone to different waypoints. But the first thing we're going to need to do is land the drone. So just go ahead and type mode land. And then the drone will go ahead and land. So there's a couple things that I forgot to mention in the first uh, tutorial. Uh, one is that if you come over to the IQ tutorials, right, and then go to the top of the page, um, you can see the documentation for all these functions that we're using right here. So you can go ahead and click on this and you can read about what all the different um, uh, functions do. So uh, this is a great resource uh, for just finding out more about how to use the API. Um, so now let's go back. The other thing that I forgot to mention was this initialize local frame function. So basically what this is doing is it's initializing a local frame that'll be uh, more easy for you guys to um, specify waypoints in. So this local frame is actually specified based off of the starting position of your drone. So I made like a little fancy graphic um, to better explain this whole uh, dealio. So when you start your drone, you put your drone down on the ground and then uh, you call that function initialize a local frame. It's going to initialize a local frame uh, as so. So your x-axis is going to be out the right side of your drone and your y-axis is going to be facing forward. So then when we start to call waypoints, right, the, let's say the next waypoint, the first waypoint is going to be 503, negative 90. This will be 5 in the x-direction, 0 in the y-direction, 3 in the z-direction, which is above the ground, and then negative uh, 90 is the direction that the drone is facing. And per um, per the right hand rule, um, psi is actually just an angle around the z axis. And um, if the drone rotates this direction, as it's doing here, this is negative 90 per the right hand rule. Um, so for our program, we're trying to make our drone fly in a square. So we're going to have to go and specify all of these waypoints here. And just to show you guys how we can specify the orientation of our drone, I've also I'm also going to make the drone um, point towards the direction that it's flying as it goes through this uh, through this mission. So. Uh, now that we got that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started on programming this up. Alright, now we're going to go back to the tutorial follow along. So we're going to be adding all of these waypoints to our program that we wrote last time. And we're going to be using this data container called GNC API Waypoint. And basically this waypoint has the attributes X, Y, Z, and Psi. And this is how we're going to specify our waypoints and send it to the API. Um, then we're also going to use this C++ uh, data container called a vector. And this vector is basically like an array, but we can dynamically allocate it, which means that we can grow and shrink the size of the vector uh, as needed. So we can do push back, so we can specify one waypoint and then push back and then the next one push back. And so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Then we're going to uh, write a little control loop to send this over to the API. But let's start adding in all these waypoints now. All right, now we're going to specify our waypoints. And we're going to use a vector of GNC waypoints uh, to put all the different waypoints in. So let's go ahead and add that in. std vector. And then we're going to specify the type of vector, which is GNC underscore API underscore waypoints. Waypoints. And then we're also going to name it something, which I'm going to name it waypoints list. And then we're going to put, we're going to also specify uh, a waypoint that we can push into the vector. So this will be GNC. This will be type GNC API waypoints, and then we're going to call it next waypoints. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, specify the first waypoint, which is going to be 0, 0, 3, and then orientation 0. So next waypoint dot x equals 0, and then next 
waypoint dot y equals zero and then we're gonna do next waypoint dot z z equals three and then we're going to do next waypoint dot psi equals zero and then we're going to add this waypoint to our list of waypoints and we'll do that by doing waypoint list dot push underscore back and then we're pushing back the next waypoint so the way that I like to specify all my waypoints is just uh, continue to override next waypoint and then push that back to the waypoint list. So we'll do control C and then uh, just control V a couple times and we'll just go ahead and change all the different um, waypoints. So the, the next waypoint as we want it to go to the right will be 5x, 0y, 3z, and negative 90 psi. And then we want it to go to the corner of the square so it'll be 5, 5, 3 and then face forward which is 0 and then we want it to be 0 z uh, 0x and then 5y and then we also want it to face to the left so that'll be 90 degrees and then we want it to come home which will be 0, 0, 3 and then face towards home which will be uh, 180 degrees but finally, I also want it to land in the direction that it started facing. So I'll add one more waypoint, and this will be the same thing, 0, 0, 3, but the orientation will again be 0. So now we have all our waypoints specified. We're going to go ahead and add our control loop. All right, so for every control loop, you're going to have a rate counter. So this is of ROS and then rate and then we need to specify how quickly we want the loop to run and so what I've found is the best rate uh, for RDU Pilot and this type of uh, programming is about 2 Hertz so we're gonna just go ahead and type rate and then 2.0 and then that'll be how fast uh, we will publish uh, all these waypoints so then we're gonna go ahead and do a while a while loop and then we'll say while ROS is okay so, and that's a that's a ROS function right there and basically if we break this program uh, then ROS will not be okay and then it'll just break out of the while loop and then and then it'll end um, so after that then we're going to spin spin once ROS spin once and basically what this does is it um, allows all of the publishers and subscribers to push the data and uh, pull the data. And so this is another ROS function, um, spin and once, spin once. The other thing is we want to enforce the rate that we want this, that, that we want this loop to run at. So that'll also be um, done by typing rate dot sleep and that'll make it run at 2 hertz. So then we want to add a if condition to check if we have reached the the waypoint. So the way that we'll do this is by using the function in the API called check waypoint reached and then we'll check if it has reached a waypoint by seeing if it's returning the value 1 which is true. So we'll go ahead and write our if statement if and then add the brackets, the curly braces, and then write check, check, underscore, waypoints, underscore, reached, and then specify it's a function, and then equal, equal, one. And so basically, if we have reached the waypoint, then it will go into this if statement here. So basically, we need to uh, have a way to track which waypoint we're on. So we're going to go ahead and add, ooh, I just realized that I made a boo-boo there. We need a uh, semicolon. So we need to add a way to like track 
um, where which waypoint we're on. So we're gonna go ahead and add this um, variable called int, and then counter, and we're gonna start this off on the zero position, and then so let's let's just uh, backtrack real quick. So we'll take off, and then once we get to the takeoff, all these waypoints are reached. But this takeoff is also a waypoint. So once once the takeoff is completed, it's basically we're going to be checking to see if the takeoff waypoint's been reached. And once that returns true, then we want to go ahead and set the destination of our first waypoint. So to do that, we'll end up using the the set destination function, which is set underscore destination, and then this basically takes the um, it takes an x, y, z, and psi. So we'll just do um, waypoint list, and then we'll have it as the position of counter, which will be the first waypoint, um, and then dot x, and then we'll just go ahead and fill this out um, dot y, dot z, and then dot psi. So y and then dot z and then dot psi. Oops, control v and then dot psi. Perfect, so once we have specified, uh, or once we have set the first waypoint, we want to go ahead and set the counter counter to the next waypoint. So we'll just do counter plus plus and then that. So then we'll go back into the while loop and uh, it'll go ahead and spin it and we'll wait until we reach the next waypoint so this will take a little while and then once we reach the waypoint uh, this function will return one and then we'll come back and set the next waypoint which basically counters already been inc incremented so this will be on the second waypoint and then it'll kind of just repeat until we reach the end of the list and so we want some condition to check if we have reached the end of the list. So we're gonna go ahead and add one more if statement and just be like if counter is less than waypoint list dot size then continue to set destination to the next waypoint. And then we'll go ahead and put this um, stuff within the curly brackets. So let me just add the end curly bracket. And then we're going to also have an else statement. So if we have reached the end of the waypoint list, then we want it to go ahead and do something else. And since we specified the mission to go fly in the square and then return back to home facing the direction that we started, we'll probably just uh, want it to land. We'll just call that the end of the mission. So we'll also use the land function, which is in the API waypoint as well. So L A N D and then close the function and then semicolon and then we should be good and then uh, yep I think that should be good so we'll just go ahead and build it oh I just realized one more mistake I also think I need two uh, colons control s and we'll go back to um, the terminals that we had last time run catchkin build and we'll go ahead and let that build. Alright, perfect. So it looked like a build. So let's go back to Gazebo. Our drone seems to be ready to fly. So the next thing to do is just go ahead and run the program. So Ross run IQ underscore GNC and then square. Run that. So now we're waiting for the mode to be set to, to guide it. We'll go back to the ground, ground control station and set the mode to guided. Mode guided. And now uh, we wait and see if the program worked. Oh, it looks like it didn't work. <laughs> Alright guys, so after looking around for a little bit and debugging, I found the simple, simple little mistake. So basically, in this function check waypoint reach, um, basically it takes a tolerance. So this tolerance uh, specifies how close your drone needs to be to that waypoint uh, to for it to be considered reached. So 
the reason why you would want to specify this um, this distance is because like if your drone needs to be very precise you want it to be a low tolerance however you don't always want it to be a low tolerance because it does take a little uh, a little bit of time for your drone to to precisely navigate to that position so um, that's up to you to tune but I typically put 0.3 meters as my tolerance so put that in and then save it and then go ahead and build um, build build the catkin package again so catkin build and then we can once again go ahead and run the IQ GNC square set the mode to guided and then we can watch as our drone flies in the square So we see it take off, gets to the first waypoint, and then it turns towards the um, corner of the square, turns again, goes towards the opposite corner of the square, and it'll go right through. So basically this API allows you a lot of powerful tools to get your drone to go where you want, and this can form the basis of your intelligent vehicle. Um, so in the next couple of videos, I'm gonna be, we're going to be continuing to build on this kind of waypoint functionality and making our drone uh, identify interesting things and go to uh, interesting places. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. See you in the next one.